Hey guys, Shujin Tribble. I've gotten a lot of really bizarre questions and a lot of really interesting things that have been said over on Facebook over the last couple of times when I've been asserting my atheism to people and questioning beliefs. And I've got a lot of really, really strange things that people have said. So I decided I was going to take a couple of minutes, just a couple, to go ahead and give you a real quick course on what atheism is. Now, I could very easily point you over to a dozen what is atheism videos over on YouTube, of which there are a lot of them out there, and they're all very good. There's some that are not so good. And it's entirely possible that they would be far more eloquent than I could be. But instead of pointing you towards what somebody else says about the topic, I'm going to tell you what I, t what I think about it, how I feel about it, because it's the most honest way that I can actually explain to you what it is that I'm doing, why I am who I am. After all, I've already told people, I don't want to know what somebody else's website says about your theology. I want to know what you think. Well, here's my big opportunity. I've had some people who've said, you're no longer Catholic because you were upset about something that happened to you in your past. Well, specifically, they're talking about my wife having passed away seven years ago. This is a big red no, because my belief in God, well, specifically in Catholicism, because that's what I was raised with, was waning well before I was out of junior high school. So, yeah, no. Some people have said that the only reason I'm the way that I am is because I'm, what was the quote? Oh, well, the quote on my character, although it may or may not have specifically been about this, was that I was always a few fries short of a Happy Meal. So the fact that I was different and you didn't like me is all the reason that you needed. Some people have said it's because I just didn't go to church enough. Some people have even gone as far as to say that the only reason I'm the way that I am is because I've always been strange. I've always been a Star Trek nut. And that's the whole reason why you are the way that you are. And congratulations, you're going to die a heretic. Um, in the shortest possible explanation, let me explain to you what atheism is and how it applies to me. And I promise you, this is going to be short, like 10 seconds short. Atheism for me is this. I don't believe your God claim is supported enough for me to believe in it. That's it. That's all it comes down to. It's a simple, very simple thing. You claim a God is being out there somewhere that that's someone that possibly created everything, whatever the case may be. But you claim this God is true and accurate and is the one and only God. And me, apparently, because I don't believe in this God anymore, that all kinds of bad things are going to happen to me. Well, all kinds of bad things are going to happen to me anyway. I mean, that's just the nature of life. It just happens that way. But be that as it may for a second. What I'm saying is very simply that you claim that a particular God is true and is existent, is out there somewhere. And my simple answer to that is, I don't see it, I don't smell it, I don't taste it, it's otherwise indetectable. You are telling me that it's there, okay? Show me. Show me. Demonstrate for me this God. Bring it out, let it be tested, let me see what this God is. And let's just have it out there in the open. And time after time after time, people just don't. They just don't do any of that. 
And I, I, I've tried. I've tried many a time. I've tried many a time to say, look, this is what I've discovered in learning about Christianity. And for those of you that say otherwise, Catholicism is a subset of Christianity. Christianity is the belief that the character, wait for me, the character of Jesus Christ, as described in the Bible, is some form of God. Now, I'm saying this very carefully for a reason. That includes the Catholics, that includes the Mormons, that includes, well, a whole bunch from there. But the problem of it is, these works are themselves not internally consistent. They are not always correct from one part to another. There are a lot of places where they do corroborate each other. But a book of stories in and of itself, now just, just don't, don't go nuts on me a second, just wait. A book of stories all unto itself does not prove the existence of anything. Now, before those of you that go crazy on me over this one, you would agree with me, Harry Potter does not exist. There are, who only knows how many books about Harry Potter, we know that Harry Potter does not exist, at least to the best that we can observe and detect. Now, it's entirely possible that there is a magical Harry Potter out there that we simply cannot see, cannot detect, is, is not real to us. But maybe somewhere else out in the universe, in some other universe, there is such a person and these events did happen. Now, you would agree with me, the likelihood of that being the case is pretty small. Really small. As in like, um, no. That's how I view the Bible. Because the Bible goes ahead and says a lot of things. And a lot of things that have been left aside over the years. It was voted on as far as to which, which manuscripts and whatnot were going to be inclusive in the Bible. That one is historically accurate. But the problem of it is, no story can support that any particular person or event happened in and of itself. Can any of the events of the Bible be verified? There are certain things that do have some kind of basis in history, but have been changed and altered over the years, over the millennia, to be something that's far more palatable, that maybe explains better, because as we full well know, history goes through certain revisions after a certain point. Now, it's a hell of a lot harder to do that now because there are far more ways to corroborate. I'm not going to go into any particular part of the Bible because it's not what I'm here for. What I'm trying to explain is this is how I view religion. And it's not just the Catholic religion. It's all of the Christian religions. Because it doesn't make sense. If it's based on the Bible, it doesn't make sense. And that also goes for the ones that go with the Old Testament. The Jewish faith also, to me, does not make any kind of sense. And as I've said on a different post... Any God mythology that includes creation and hell doesn't make any sense to me. It simply doesn't. If I was supposed to accept the world as proof of God, that doesn't prove anything. You need to get from one place to another by a series of individual steps, a chain from one point to another. And religion does not get from reality to whatever this is.
And I wish I could explain it any much better than that. If I'm supposed to believe that there is a God all the time, simply because I was brought up on that. If I was supposed to believe there is a God because I'm supposed to believe before I can disbelieve? How about the Loch Ness Monster? How about any mythological creatures? I would have to believe that those exist first before they're proven not to be? Religions say there is a God. I say show me. Show me by whatever series of steps that gets you from there is a God, I believe there is a God, all the way to here's God. Because every time that's been done before, science comes in and says, this is scientifically explained. Poof. Thor is the god of lightning bolts, and he will go ahead and strike down your high house because it's coming up to Midgard, and we don't want, the, oh, that's static electricity. Poof. Ra is the god that takes the sun across the sky in his chariot so that we may have day and night. Oh, wait, that's the rotation of the earth, which is round, by the way. The stars, those lights up there in the sky, they're pinholes in the covering that God has put over the unit. Oh, they're, they're stars out suspended in space. It's called the gap, the God of the gaps. That doesn't hold water either. I didn't want to make this video as long as it is, but I wanted you to understand in, very, in a very clean fashion, why I don't believe anymore. Yes, I was brought up with all this stuff, the same as what you guys were. But I've had the opportunity of really wondering the biggest question of all. The question is, why? It's the most important question ever. Why? If an eight-year-old kid can say, why did God flood the earth and kill everything on it, only saving this handful of people? Why didn't he just kill all the people? Why did everyone on the earth had to die and only these people didn't? Why water? Why not just stop it all and start all over again. Why have a human sacrifice to get around a law that God himself created in the first place? Can he just change the law? Start all over again? These are the problems that I've got with religion. Not just any one of them. I hope you can understand my place because I'm not telling any person, any particular person at all, you're a bad person for, for believing in this. Not by long shot. And I'm not saying you're wrong for believing in it. I'm not saying that you're stupid. I'm not saying that you're a moron or ignorant. All I'm saying is that I don't agree with what you believe in. I don't see it as true. I don't even see it as even plausible. That doesn't make me a bad person. It means that I have questions that haven't been answered. And what I want to do is have you look at my questions. Not to question yourself, but to answer those questions, to give me the why, to give me the chain that brings us from my question to whatever this is. 
Now, it's entirely possible that this could be a god. I don't know. It's entirely possible that this could be unanswerable. Or at least at this time. There's always stuff that we are still looking towards answering. But it's entirely possible these questions of theology that I have posed maybe nothing more than stories. Like I said, the biggest and most powerful question in the world is why. That's all I'm trying to find out. Until another time, I wish you the peace I no longer have. I wish you the strength that I've learned. I wish you well. From Studio O, The Feline Conspiracy, good night.